I'm Dr. Felipe Lobello, Associate Professor in the Hoover Department of Global Health and Director of the Exercises Medicine Research and Collaboration Center at the Rollins School of Public Health, Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm here today to discuss our paper entitled Cardiometabolic Risk Reduction Through Recreational Group Sport Interventions in Adults, which we published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I'd first like to thank acknowledge and congratulate my co-authors, especially the first author, Moriah Bellissimo, a PhD candidate in the Emory Nutrition and Health Sciences program, and my other co-authors, Dr. Carla Galaviz and Meredith Pasker, for their excellent work on this manuscript. It is well known that physical inactivity is a leading cause of cardiometabolic disease morbidity and mortality, with recent estimates, estimates attributing more than 5 million deaths globally. In the U.S., only about half of the adult population report meeting the federal physical activity guidelines, and many obstacles to sustain an active lifestyle are reported, such as environmental barriers or low motivation to adhere to traditional lifestyle interventions, among others. From a behavioral perspective, recreational group sports offer an alternative to individual exercise options and traditional lifestyle programs by introducing a fun, social component around very popular activities that most of us played and enjoyed at some point of our, in our lives. And these aspects have been shown to lead to increased motivation and patient adherence when interventions compared to traditional individual-based exercise or sit-and-learn lifestyle interventions. On the other hand, from a physiologic perspective, work led by Peter Krostrup and colleagues has shown that the variety of movement patterns inherent to group sport participation such as sprints, muscle loading, intense actions such as dribbles, shots, jumps, changes in direction and acceleration, in essence a combination of aerobic high intensity, endurance and resistance exercise, result in broad range physiologic effects such as reductions in insulin resistance, chronic inflammation and arterial stiffness, which in turn lead to improvements in cardiovascular, metabolic and skeletal fitness. Despite its relatively high intensity, recreational group sport participants report lower rates of perceived exertion compared with other exercise modalities such as jogging, interval running, and strength training. This may contribute to the high enjoyment and adherence rates that group sport interventions have compared to traditional exercise modalities. While previously published reviews and meta-analysis have focused on specific components of fitness or particular group sports, the objective of our study was to do a comprehensive evaluation of the published literature to determine the effects of multiple community-based recreational group sport interventions on a wide range of cardiometabolic biomarkers and fitness. We systematically searched electronic databases for English language articles reporting the effectiveness of recreational group sports published between January of 1965 and January of 2017. Group sports included in our search were based on the current list of Olympic team sports of at least moderate intensity exercise. And this resulted in nine target sports, basketball, baseball, football, handball, hockey, soccer, softball, rugby, and volleyball. Control groups consisted of participants with baseline physical activity levels similar to the intervention group and that continued their current lifestyle or alternative physical activity interventions. We included studies that used single arm before and after randomized control trial or quasi-experimental designs. Among the studies meeting our inclusion criteria, we extracted baseline and end of intervention means for five outcome categories, body composition, lipid profiles, blood pressure, glucose homeostasis, and aerobic fitness indicators. We then used random or fixed effects meta-analysis to obtain pooled effects before and after group sport programs within intervention participants and between intervention and control groups. 23 studies met our review criteria, including 902 participants with a mean age of 46.6 plus minus 11.7 years comprising 21 soccer and two rugby interventions. We found that intervention participants achieved larger improvements compared with control subjects 
in most of the studied outcomes with effects both statistically and clinically significant. Overall, recreational group sport intervention participants reduced weight by 1.5 kilos, BMI by 0.9 units, body fat by 1.8%, and waist circumference by 0.8 centimeters. Male-only studies lost an average of 3.7 kilos, which equated to 4.6 body weight reduction from baseline, close to the recommended 5% by the National Diabetes Prevention Program. Intervention participants also reduced their systolic pressure on average by 5.7 and diastolic by 3.4 millimeters of mercury, compared to controls. In terms of aerobic fitness markers, intervention participants saw their heart rate reduced on average by 5.5 beats per minute, while increasing VO2 max by 3.9 milliliters per minute per kilo, more than control participants. These effects are comparable and in most cases superior to what traditional aerobic training studies have shown. Total cholesterol saw modest reductions by 0.3 and LDL cholesterol 0.4 millimoles per liter. No considerable improvements were observed for HDL or for glucose homeostasis markers for the intervention participants compared with controls. However, there was a significant improvement in the HOMA insulin resistance index among intervention participants from baseline to end of intervention. There is strong evidence that physical activity participation fosters improvement in HDL, insulin sensitivity, and non-insulin-mediated glucose transport, so our findings may be related to limited statistical power among several of the trials included in this review or exercise intervention intensity and duration. We also conducted sensitivity analysis for different subgroups. 16 of the 23 studies were considered high quality based on their low attrition rates and inclusion of a control group. And in these studies, the cardiometabolic risk reduction effects were consistent and in the cases of body composition greater than the estimates obtained when all 23 studies were included. Similarly, results were consistent and in most cases, higher effects saw uh, seen among studies that enroll only participants with diagnosed hypertension or type 2 diabetes. Now, some of our study's limitations. Most of the included studies used soccer as a sport intervention, with a couple based on rugby, and took place in Europe. We believe there is a need for implementation of these types of interventions in different locations with more varied populations in terms of race and ethnicity, and using other group sports such as basketball, volleyball, field or ice hockey, for example. Future studies should investigate the comparisons of group sports to traditional exercise interventions such as running or cycling, alone or in combination with dietary and other behavioral interventions. We conclude that group sport participation, primarily recreational soccer, was associated with broad reaching and clinically significant improvements in body composition, lipid profiles, blood pressure, and aerobic fitness across populations of men and women in studies with durations of six months or less and in healthy as well as clinical populations at high risk of cardiometabolic diseases such as those with diagnosed diabetes or hypertension. We believe that group sport interventions have the potential for broad public health impact. Although only 25% of U.S. adults report current participation, 75% report ever playing sports. Six out of 10 of the most popular physical activities in the United States are group sports, including basketball, baseball, softball, soccer, football, and volleyball. This is also the case globally. For example, there are over 500 million registered soccer players, the world's most popular sport. These findings suggest that group sport interventions are promising strategies for reducing cardiometabolic risk in adults and can be applied to primordial, primary and secondary prevention of cardiometabolic and other inactivity-related chronic diseases. The results of this study provide support for continued testing and scaling up of recreational group-based sport programs to help reduce the consequences of physical inactivity, one of the most important risk factors for chronic disease, morbidity, and mortality globally. Thanks for your attention. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. 
There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.